Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Open New Go call. Uh, thanks for joining. As usual, the call is public and recorded, so please be mindful of uh, the information you share and the comments you make. Uh, they will be uh, public uh, uh, on YouTube. So first up, um, the, the agenda is pretty much the same, but I would like to get, to get an update from Michael about uh, the uh, software uh, update. Uh, yesterday, I delivered uh, a new patch with the uh, work in progress state of uh, the implementation that I could provide so far. Uh, this is more or less a basic uh, test on the progress of the MC download for an only software, software file. Uh, this is uh, specifically internally created test file only. So it's just for the verification of the OMC behavior. Um, I encountered some restrictions in the OMC lib implementation that is needed for that. So I had to include some tricks to, to overcome and to, to leave the specific processing out of the sequence at the moment. So that is uh, one of the points also mentioned here that uh, some MC look up and MC look go update is required to work correctly in this new step. Um, um, the patch that I have provided uh, nevertheless also includes some changes that are not directly concerned with the uh, upgrade mechanism. And of course, I also have already put some comments on that. Um, I still have to respond to that and uh, make an adaptation and a new patch uh, version then. Um, some of the, uh, the points that it also mentioned in the discussion around this uh, patch is uh, the locking facility um, when using the, the OMC transfer for the for a quite big uh, OMU software file then there are a lot of OMC messages and if you are using debug level then there will be a lot of uh, debug level um, Log entries uh, mainly also coming from the central libraries. And, uh, I already started a discussion with uh, Andrea if there is some means to um, to to avoid this situation. Mm -hmm. I think you pointed out that uh, it is at the moment it is not possible to to add a further debug level. Due to restrictions in the, in, I think, what is it called, ZEP or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is perhaps will be an ongoing process, but uh, some remark I have to do in this respect. So is that at least in my local machine testing, um, at the moment, I'm not able to fetch a complete uh, log file after the uh, Download procedure and the log file is aborted at a certain time and uh, it does not come to the end, even though the functionality itself um, is given. So, yeah, but in, in the moment means that if such uh, if this procedure is used, then you mainly can only work in the info log level. Now, there are some points that, in my point of view, should still be discussed in, in the implementation. Uh, I hope that some more people will have a closer look on the implementation. And then um, I think we, we will come across some, some issues that might be discussed. And for now, I wanted to provide the, the current state of implementation. So that this discussion can be started. Okay, so I've taken a look at the implementation. It's actually pretty good, I like it. Uh, and it's actually separated in a way that in the future, 
whenever we might have some updates to the Volta Protos, uh, it can be changed and supported and called in also other ways. It's not exactly tied and dependent to the APIs that we have, which are uh, which might change in the future, which is good. Uh, regarding the logs, do you mind opening me a Jira? Because otherwise in Slack, I completely lose track of it. Uh, with uh, the log messages that uh, um, are um, printed too much. Uh, and an example of it, I know you sent it on Slack. I just, please open a Jira for me. Uh, I might look at possibly removing some of those logs or like doing something at least to get to a somewhat usable state. As you said, unfortunately, Zap, which is the library that we support, we use does not support trace. Uh, I went in and looked at what they say in their uh, GitHub and they will not do it. Like straight up and simple, they will not do it. So either we change the library, which is gonna be a pain, or we just live with this and make our code a little different, which is what we're gonna do most likely. So this is it. Yeah, there's an, Andrea, there has been a long discussion going on on tracing in the community. Tracing meaning log.trace and not that support in the library. Uh, and it was decided not to do it, so. Oh, okay. But, but, but Matteo, I have seen in, in BBZim you are supporting trace, but on another way, on another way, right? Yeah, BBZim uses a different library. Because huh. it started as an independent pro project of Volta, and I never got around to change it. There is actually a Jira somewhere to change the BBC logging library to use the Volta library. But but then you 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 will also lose the capability of using trace, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's part of why I never did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, maybe we can devise a way, given that this software update is a pretty heavy way, uh, and also um, all these messages. Again, please, Michael, open up a Jira so we can keep track of the conversation. Otherwise, in the thread of Slack, it gets lost. Yeah. And, uh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And I'll start. I think also another way of, of solving the issues might be, I'm not really sure if uh, there will be a shift in the interpretation of the debug levels. I'm not so very sure that uh, the warning and the error levels are that big separated. So maybe some the info level could be shifted to warning and then we have the, the info level as debug and debug as trace, something like that and would be also possible in emergency, but yeah, that could uh, fully different. Uh, so the, just a question, is, uh, is the problem uh, that that feature will be too verbose? Yeah, mm -hmm. actually. But how, how often are we going to do a software update? No, the issue is that if you turn on debug, there's never, go you don't even, Michael was not even uh, seeing the full extent of the logs. The problem is that uh... Uh, the the software image is, uh, is separated into very small sections of 31 bytes and uh, each byte, uh, each of this, uh, this section is uh, transmitted as a separate homocephalic one and you have a full kind of stuff in, in the system that is uh, connected with the transmission of such an OMC data run. And you have many logs for that. So if you have thousands of sec sections, you have uh, ten thousands of log entries, which makes no sense. Okay. And that also, of course, takes time if we already have a look at the, the timing uh, restrictions that we also want to, to focus on in the implementation. Of course, um, the real tests will only be done with a uh, higher debug level, you know, something like info or warning, something like that. So then when you don't have the real printouts, 
yeah, if you really want to see something in, in the debug level, then yeah, the log file get lost. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's take it uh, offline and uh, let's finish up the discussion over there. Um, yeah, may maybe a way to uh, to simplify that is to use the uh, log packages that the library supports, so we can have we can divide the messages in different packages and set them at different levels. But yeah, we, we can take this offline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but thanks for the patch, uh, Michael. Uh, I've given some comments. Uh, um, I see Holger gave some. I would like Girish to take a look at this. Uh, one question uh, that I have is how is this being tested? Yeah, mainly this is uh, uh, kind of, of uh, test implementation itself. The only thing is that it is required for testing is are these uh, bolt control APIs that you provided in your recent patches. So the image download and image activate APIs and these are the triggers that, that are necessary to start the recording uh, procedure. Okay, uh, and this is not tested against any uh, Artran uh, simulator that you have? No, no, no. This is an internal test, just just checking the transfer of, of the file based on recording pointer checks and length checks okay. and so on. So something that is uh, simulated internally. The, the issue is that I think, I don't remember that exactly the Ancelib still has also some problems in the download section handling so that at the moment the, the section datagrams are not really transmitted to the owner. Um, so by now that's a very early state of internal test. But the basic implementation of the state machine is there and as you have seen the there's a way that, that you can adapt that to, to, to changes that we have already been discussed in the control um, API or user interface. So that is basically there. And I would also recommend Matteo to have a look at that uh, yeah. in case that Matteo starts with some implementation for the only upgrade procedure. Uh, for the BBZIM, based on the Ancelib implementation, then um, most of the code fragments that uh, should normally be on the Ancelib are also already here in this uh, software. Because I had to, to simulate the answers in, in the adapter already itself. Okay. Yeah, so let's uh, let's have a look at the patch and uh, let's continue working on that. Um, thanks for for it. And in the meantime, we can work on the BBC implementation. Um, regarding the PM configs, uh, Grish, uh, what's the status on that? Uh, yeah, I. I implemented the framework for L2 PM counter collection and uh, implemented a couple of uh, L2 uh, classical PM counters. I tested them, it works. Uh, and uh, not just plain testing, I did when you reboots, OAT reboots, uh, when you disable enable. I mean, uh, it, I did whatever testing I could and uh, it works. I have a few comments from Mikhail. Uh, I look at them today. Okay, and um, so one question that I have for the group is uh, uh, out of these, uh, effectively you implemented this, these two, right? Yeah, yeah. So 
out of these five, uh, are all of these important to uh, to the deployment in, like, for example, Turk Telecom and Deutsche Telekom, or do you guys know if some of these can be glossed over? If, for example, the XGS pond, uh, I mean, we're talking G pond right now. It's maybe not mandatory to have that. Does anybody have an opinion? Yeah, I have. Yeah, j just to note, uh, not all of these counters may be supported across all ONUs. Yeah. Uh, I think we have to fetch the ME capability via, there is an OMCI ME. We have to fetch the capability of, of the ONU to support these MEs and only then, you know, create uh, these MEs. But again, uh, uh, are all these counters, uh, I mean, these are there in the Pi Volta implementation, but uh, do, do we need all these to be implemented? Uh, uh, any thoughts from anyone? Uh, I would say, I would guess, <laughs> just to guess, that FEC and GEM port counters are essential for operators to check on possible uh, problem situations. So, and we got our basic PM counters, even more than Ethernet counters. So if you have a problem on the on the cheap on side, you need always check these. On the other hand, I have seen, or at least I have the impression that the fact counters are also not yet supported on the the ones you have. But I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think probably the Ethernet statistics that you can get off the bridge ports are probably of interest. Just either the base one or the extended. Yeah, uh, the, the ONU I have, uh, the alpha ONUs don't support the extended counters. Um, no. uh, but uh, the thing, uh, the one difference I have seen in the Golang implementation versus the Pi Volta was, uh, I think in the Pi Volta, we are fetching, uh, we, we are storing the OMCI MA capability in the DB, but that doesn't seem to be the case in Golang, Golang version. I mean, we have to fetch this uh, OMCI ME separately and then parse through the elements in that, uh, in, in that payload to understand what MEs uh, are supported by the ONU and what is not? I mean, this information is not already present in the TB currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the capabilities is is probably something that needs to be done after a MIB sync is achieved before before you start bridge port setups. Uh, that that should probably be something to eventually do. Okay. Uh, as far as okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I, I just the the capabilities is is just really important because from that you can derive if you have that. There you can derive, you know, whether you're doing uh, VTEC leaps or PPTP Ethernet unis and all that information. Yeah, I mean, specifically the information you said, like VIP or PPTP, I mean, this information is fetched, but in general, the entire ME supported by the ONU, uh, that information is not uh, stored as far as I know. Uh, is that correct, uh, Mikhail or Holger? I'm not sure if you're right. So what we are storing is that what we upload in the MIP upload. So that is normally, in my point of view, what the UNO is really announcing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, the, uh, that, that ME is, is basically, it's two tables, so you don't get it during the MIP upload. It has to be specifically requested. Yeah. yeah the, D during MIP upload, you, you just get what is already created uh, on the ONU, but... Well, the, yeah. yeah, you get all the MEs, but there's always an in, in instance of the OMCI ME, but since its attributes are both tables, tables aren't transported like count... Tables and counters aren't transported in MIB uploads. So you don't mm -hmm. get that right. ME at all, even though it should be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know then I remember that uh, in the Python version there was some 
ja, als ein großes Sicherheitsdruckmaschine vor die äh, Capability äh, request. This is something that uh, we haven't yet implemented in the only adapter because we have seen no usage for that so far. Um, if it is required, then of course it you know, must be planned and must be implemented. But I'm not really sure if that really is required here, but uh, we can perhaps discuss it over also offline. So for instance, I would not know for the example of the FEC counters, FEC PM counters, for instance, that there is a capability that is indicated by the end for that. But yeah, I'm not sure and we can perhaps discuss that as well. Okay, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, yeah, we can plan this uh, sometime. Uh, I, I'll just go ahead and start implementing you know, giving support for these counters and whatever my menu doesn't support, I'm just going to disable them by default for now. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it should be a small change uh, once the capability uh, fetching, I mean, we have the facility to fetch the capability, we can, you know, dynamically enable or disable these counters. Okay, thank yeah, you. That, that's all for me. So I would go ahead and start with these two if you can, as soon as this one is done. Uh, so at least those are done. And then I can go ahead and investigate the XG pond ones uh, and see if we, if we actually need them. Uh, again, Grish, maybe you can give us some uh, uh, some thoughts or some uh, update on that flow delete add issue for the at and workflow. I saw there was a huge discussion on, on, on Slack. Unfortunately, I was, I, I couldn't uh, like totally follow it and it seems that the conclusion is that there were two issues uh, one for the kv store muted lock and one for the subscriber flow removal uh, girish michael can you give us some thought and what are the next steps in here uh, yeah i mean a quick summary is that there are three procedures uh, uh, that seem to happen uh, almost simultaneously and one of the procedure is holding on for a log, uh, I mean, for a long time, which is needed by another procedure. Uh, uh, to speak in detail, I mean, we have EA pull flow uh, remove coming first after provisioning the sub, oh, sorry, just a second. Uh, I I'm just collecting my thoughts here. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have initially EA pull flow installed. And after provisioning the subscriber, the EA pull flow is removed. And uh, the jump port and PCONs are removed too. I mean, we get this request from the OLT adapter. And then the subscriber flows are added. Uh, the the TCON and jump port removal procedure seem to hold on for the ONU KV store mutex lock for a very long time, which is needed by uh, the subscriber add flows to, uh, so it seems to cause some deadlock. Uh, so I think Mikhail had a suggestion to not hold this ONU KV store mutex for a long time and just use it when we try to update the KV store, you know, something like that. Yeah, that's correct. And I also have discussed that a little bit with Holger already. Um, we think that uh, the, the usage of this uh, semaphore is really a little bit too far going. Um, but we, we have to take care that uh, we, we do not restrict it uh, now to, to a focus that is too small. So uh, maybe we have to differentiate the, the access to the K4 store, to the ETC on the one hand, with a separate semaphore and on the access to the internal resistant data, which are kept in the owner adapter on the other hand with, a, with another semaphore. Uh, so that must be yeah, carefully inspected and uh, overworked. But basically, I, will, I, I would still hope that um, making a 
smaller access on these semaphores would be resolved this in that box situation. Yeah, that was the one problem that was mainly described by the Yerish in found in his testing or in the overnight testing. But there's a different uh, problem with the, also in the at and scenario with the uh, remove subscriber sequence. And there's also some internal um, issue that uh, the flow configuration, namely the flow delete and the flow add uh, of the EAPOL uh, flow person is not received in the owner adapter in the expected sequence. And that leads to some internal problems. And finally, uh, not in the correct configuration. And we yeah, still need to find a solution. And I ask you to perhaps comment on that still in, in Slack. Uh, I think you. Uh, do we have, a little bit of time. Uh, Michael, do we have a trace for this? A log, a set of logs? I also have a lot there. I'm not sure if I have attached that already. But, yeah. If you want to have a lot, I can provide. So this is no deadlock situation for the Zimmer force. This is a simple logical issue. Okay, maybe open a Jira so the log is there and maybe we can take a look. Uh, if they are received in the, the not the correct order, it might be that uh, we send them out uh, in the un incorrect order in from from the adapters or the core. We we would have to double check all this. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that uh, so the sender in this case is the UOT adapter who sends the uh, uh, sorry. No, I'm on the one side, I guess. Okay. Uh, full configuration is from RB Core, yes. <laughs> so RB Core is the, 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 the sender. But uh, I think this uh, the, the sending or the transmission towards the owner adapter is more or less done in parallel. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, both requests, the, the add and the delete for, for the flow is uh, received in the adapter at just the same time point and unfortunately or accidentally sometimes <laughs> we, we delete at first I think and uh, no, we add at first and then we delete the long sequence so um, I'm not sure if that can be changed easily on the RW core no. No. Perhaps we also have to discuss this. Okay, uh, let let's open the Jira, see the see the logs, and uh, we can take it from there to understand what steps needs to be need to be done. Okay, uh, and for the the first one, the KV4 mutex uh, lock, uh, Girish, are you gonna fix that in your patch? No, I think Kirish is uh, <laughs> waiting for something there. So yeah, I ask Holger to have a closer look on that, and I hope Holger is at the moment with that. So, Holger? Yeah, I, I can do a, to have a look. And if there's something, then perhaps Holger can provide a supplement. Okay. Sorry, my internet was choppy. Uh, uh, is it Holger that's going to look at this? Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, 
Uh, Chip, I think the next three are somewhat yours with uh, the collaboration of Imani. Um, can you comment on the first two and then uh, I'll let Imani speak about the second one, the third one? Uh, yeah, I, I, I finished uh, the fix, I think, for 3807. So I think I just got reviewed through and I'll have 3809 in today. And um, I believe uh, Michael put in 3808. I was going to look at that one next. I was trying to do the counters since uh, Grish is working on some of the PM related information. I wanted to get those in. And I, the next higher priority, I think, would be getting some of the software update uh, requests that Michael has for 3808, I believe. And Hamani can, can comment on the alarm. So we're, that's proceeding pretty well. OK. Uh, Hamani, do you want to give us an update on the alarm stuff? Hi. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, I was uh, I'm unable to test because uh, the BBSIM Katalu a new alarm raise command. It's only sending an alarm indication, but uh, it's not sending the alarm state change notification as expected for the OMCA alarm state change. Uh, so those changes need need to be there so that I can test my code uh, as I don't have any setup. So I need to start with those changes and I have uh, resolved the review comments for the open or new adapter code. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, uh, Theo, would you mind pointing Himani to the proper place where to make the changes that are needed for the, for the missing components in within BBSIM? Uh, yeah, we, we started talking yesterday on uh, Slack. Great. Uh, so I, I saw you send a message to me overnight. Um, I'll uh, reply to you shortly. Okay, sure. Mommy, do I correctly understand you? You don't see any alarms sent from BBC? Because that was a bit surprising for me. Because, I can uh, see the alarms. The alarms are going to the OLT adapter, but that is going as an alarm indication. Uh, there, uh, there, there needs to be an alarm state change indication as uh, alarm notification message, which contains a bitmap of the alarms and uh, the bitmap uh, defines which alarm is raised and which one is cleared. So those things are not there in the BBSIM currently. So long story short, BBSIM as of now doesn't send any OMCI alarm. Yeah. Okay, and I think we have a path forward for this one. Uh, and thanks for the patch. Please do go and take a look, uh, make a review, uh, guys. Uh, Holger, Michael, and the rest of the folks, please do take a look at the patch. It's uh, I've I've taken a look. I've provided some comments. I would like this to be tested before it gets merged. So, so that's why we're working on the BBC implementation of things. Okay, uh, anything, uh, any question for Rimani on this one? Okay, and I believe all the changes to uh, OMCI lib go actually wedged in, correct? Mm, yes, OMCI lib changes are submitted. Perfect, perfect, great. Uh, Chip, anything on this? No, no, nothing additional. Um, I guess in the OMSI, OMSI libgo, there's some test code for how to pack up the alarm notification message, if that helps. Okay. Perfect. 
Uh, okay. Uh, Theo, do you want to give us an update on the WebCI LibGo for BBSIM? Uh, and what's the status of that? So, um, uh, the status is that the new reboot and the MDS support that has been done and this merged. Um, I'm now working on the priority queue uh, leakage. Uh, I sent a couple of messages yesterday. I have a much better understanding now. Um, I think next time I'll meet Girish, I'll ask him to explain me how to read the specs because there is evidently something I'm missing there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know, uh, I know what I need to do. Uh, I'm going to update my patch today. Um, and uh, and push a new patch by uh, end of the day today. Okay, and uh, uh, thanks, Theo. And based on that, uh, I remember that there was a discussion about some uh, uh, missing handling that we were not doing in the Volta uh, Go adapter, uh, where the technology profile uh, was not failed if we were not finding the we're not finding the right elements is that still correct holger michael should we put in some more checks in there yes that's correct and, uh, my memory says that we have created a geo for that but i'm not sure at the moment so i can check that I think we have created it here, I can reach it. Okay. Uh, I, th I think you created a new story for it. Mm -hmm. not, not, not the bug, but a better story, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And there was a statement, something that I was still not unsure how to behave in such a situation. And here is already commented on that. It's like I think that we may respond with some error to uh, what is it to the OT I have done if we cannot set the requested technical due to any limitations. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, responding with an error sounds uh, pretty good to me. Uh, so yeah, I would say let's. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, take it on whenever it can be done. And uh, there's just there is a Jira, so we're we're good. Not that we're not losing this. So I'm happy with this, and I'm glad we found it. So it's a one more, one more thing that we are uh, planning against. If something goes wrong, we have this. Okay, good. Uh, maybe, maybe Andrea, this is the Jira that we have before these lines. I guess this is. Oh, is it ready? Right. Okay. Uh, so I Ah, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Uh, Holger, uh, regarding the MIM sync audit, is there anything left to do? Uh, because I think we merged the patch, right? No, actually, we have this MDS, MDS based solution is merged, you're right. And um, the question is uh, um, how to proceed further with this more complicated stuff of re synchronization. But uh, I, I so I've seen that you got an answer from Deutsche Telekom that they do not intend to uh, use lib audit right currently. And uh, this is a question: What is the priority of further steps? For example, this this re synchronization stuff, which is open, that we check the particular configuration and not only the uh, lib data sync counter. So a question, uh, what is the pr pr priority here? So I think you bring up a very good point. I think where we are right now, it's a, it's a first initial step. And given that our operators uh, maybe will use this feature, but uh, uh, will not be on by default, and it would be used in cases where 
there is some maybe known issue or things like that. I would say that where we are right now, it's fine for the, for the time being. So I would say okay. that uh, let you just make sure that everything is okay. Uh, and it's disabled by default, as I think you have right now. Uh, and uh, we just call this one a day for now. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing would be the, the second use of, of the re resynchronization, which could all, also be used in case of reconciling, you know, uh, because um, uh, this, this also was also uh, the dual use uh, when, when the adapter restarts, not to provision the own use again, but to, to uh, query the, the current configuration of the own use and, and if it is uh, the same as uh, we have from the, from the ETCD data stored and not provision it again. Um, that's why, okay, that's re synchronization stuff would also have this use case. So therefore the question is um, how important this is. It's a good question. It's actually fairly important because uh, we would like to have the capability for a restart of a component, component not to have to reprovision uh, the data plane, meaning to be a restart of the component to be non-service disruptive, if possible, obviously. Um, so, so that has a higher priority in my mind. So that I could actually. But actually, we, do, we, we do, uh, uh, don't promise it for Volta 2.7, right? This uh, is uh, change handling. Yes, we did not. We might uh, need a bump in priority for that because uh, that would allow us to have minor software updates in, in service meaning we would not have to tear down the data plane of the subscribers to update the version of the ONU adapter go. So that is why I think it might be a little bit more important than what we originally thought. Uh, Actually, uh, that is... Go ahead. Uh, but but what, what, what does it have to do with, with, with this update? Because it was uh, the use case we discussed was that the adapter restarts, right? Yes. And there's no up, update involved there. There's only yeah. the state of state of the art or state of status quo, quo will be re, um, regenerated or re-enabled. Good point. The idea here is, let me explain. The idea is that uh, a minor software update of a component, let's say going from 2.6.1 of the OpenONU Go to 2.6.2 .2 to introduce a bug fix should not be service impacting on the, okay. devi on the devices. Okay, I see, hmm, I see. Hmm. So there will be no data store change. You will see the same data format across the two versions and effectively, this is going to be treated as, a, as an adapter. Because what it's going to do is that it's just going to start with a different minor version. So having that capability to reconcile against the ONU would be great. Okay, but, but there's a new uh, use case we haven't promised so far, right? Yes, yes I know. To, to, to I know. I know. Uh, but... Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's worth uh, investigating and seeing uh, how long, how, how much effort does it take? And then we can decide if we can do it in 2.7 or we cannot do it in 2.7. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll trust you start the JIRAs and uh, the, usual, uh, the usual things for that. It would be, uh, would be good to have them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, yeah, this is what we discussed before, so I'm not gonna go over it. Um, let's let's take it offline as we discussed, as we said. Um, this is uh, um, partially done. Uh, the uh, Andre, I think three seven eight three seven eight three. I think it's done. Yes. Uh, the discarded responses uh, chip. What's uh, what's that? I I blank I blanked on it. I think that was a feature in BBC to tell him to just drop some OMCI uh, responses. There were a couple scenarios. But I think it's basically to do some failure testing or failure recovery in the doctor. Yes. Okay, is that done? No. I see. Okay. okay. The the MIB audit uh, it's it's done actually. That's good. Okay. Um, Thorsten, do you want us to give us an update on the testing? How is that progressing? Yes, I can do. Okay, the first point uh, was done last week, so we, I think we can remove it here. Yep. Uh, the second and third points are in the meanwhile reviewed and submitted. So we have since last Friday, I think, two periodical uh, pipelines for the Open ONU Go adapter. Um, but the results are unfortunately not so good. It's more red than green. Um, I tried to get the reason why it's so and found some issues. Some issues could solved. And I think uh, a lot of issues will disappear when the part with the lock in the go adapter will be solved, when the air pole flows will be removed. And um, I think uh, with the change in the BBZIM from the old version to the new one with the OMC GoLib, uh, there came up some more small issues I have to investigate. Not all I can uh, address till now, but I think I am on a good way. And so we have to wait and see what happens. Software will come from BBZIM as well as from Open Onu Go adapter. Um, the last point, the Kiwi store prefix, I made a suggestion. Matteo and Hardik uh, did make some comments and I think we can move it from uh, work in progress to a patch. And if we will take it over, then we have to do some small uh, modifications in the pipeline too, but uh, I think it's not so much. Yes. Um, oh, no, there is it. PM counters. Yes, uh, I try my first steps this week with the PM counters. Uh, was not so successful, but it's normal. I'm in contact with Girish and he gave me some hints and uh, hopefully tomorrow I will make a big step in the right direction on this topic. And then we will see how, how it will go into a robot test case or test cases. Okay. So P PM counter tests, uh, I think it's in progress. Yep. Okay. Great, perfect. Um, so that's all I had for, thanks Torsten. Uh, that's all I had for today. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, j just just a uh, comment about the issue that Torsten was facing. Uh, I have done my testing in the Docker Compose environment, uh, and uh, obviously Torsten tests in in a in a more realistic case deployment. The issue there is uh, uh, the the Kafka uh, part DNS name is not getting resolved when when Volt Cuttle is run. Uh, from outside the cluster. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if, if these DNS names get resolved only within the pods or they should be resolved from outside the pod too. Uh, you know, that's basically the problem. And a, a, a temporary solution for him to proceed ahead, I just, you know, suggested to, you know, add uh, this DNS resolution, the ETC hosts file for now. Uh, but a general question to anyone you know, much familiar about K8s, uh, uh, who, who is supposed to resolve these DNS names from from outside the pod? Uh, they are not supposed to be resolved from outside the pod. Ah, uh, then I, I don't know then how to fix this problem. So basically the world cuttle, uh, when we try to dump the events, uh, uh, from uh, Kafka, it, the, the error it says is uh, that it cannot resolve uh, the Kafka part DNS name. But why, why is it trying to resolve the DNS name? That's the interesting question. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I can probably, okay, go ahead. So you may want to check with Scott Baker um, okay. You wrote that part of VolCTL, uh, uh, and I know he was testing it with KineVolta. So uh, I think in that automated test that we're doing on Jenkins, we are actually running VolCTL within a, a Kubernetes pod. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I looked at one of the logs, and it was running from within the pod, and that's how it used to work. But Torsten was trying out from outside the pod. Yeah, I think he had a workaround to get it to work. Uh, uh, locally. Uh, it's been a while, so I don't know. It's still worth it to check with him. Okay. Yeah, for now, I just added the resolution, the Etsy hosts file. Let me check what he did. Yeah, if that works, that, that could be a fine, uh, a fine solution to uh, work on the test locally and then on Jenkins, we can keep running them on a pod. Yeah, I think on Jenkins we can uh, just install as we are still doing uh, the Vault CTL in within a pod, and that's it. And we just call it a day. Okay, then, uh, Torsten, I think uh, this workaround is good enough for you now to test PM. And uh, since we anyway run Vault Cuttle within a pod uh, on Jenkins, it should be fine for you. Well, not not always. We will, whenever Torsten has the, the test ready, uh, we will have to add that uh, test. Uh, uh, we will have to add the Vault CTL pod to this to the pipeline where we merge this test. But let's take it one step at a time. The resolution you have done, I think, it works for uh, for you, Torsten. So that that's good. Uh, let's let's continue in that in that direction. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Uh, anything else? Uh, actually, I would like uh, what what uh, wanted to talk about the Go profiling concept. If you have already some, but uh, regarding this time, uh, I, I already posted some some questions in in, in our our channel. Um, because um, the question is, do we do we need a general concept for the profiling? Uh, that means configuration via the Helm charts for for each uh, image um, of of the Volta system, or sh should we implement a, a standalone solution here for for the Onugo adapter? Or we have to spend some thoughts about it how we can uh, investigate or debug uh, the images in, in the, within the uh, Volta cluster. You know, that was uh, the problem was uh, that at, at Atlant site, we saw uh, in our long-term tests that uh, the memory uh, consumed by the ONU adapter is increasing, slightly increasing. And 
that's why we we thought about uh, arming or uh, um, uh, putting some some profiling in in this in this image. Uh, probably you remember. And uh, the question is, do we need a general concept or should we uh, try to to solve this uh, now for for the ONU adapter first? I still don't get why it doesn't work. We have done profiling in the past, so. Actually, the, the, the question is um, when uh, uh, when you when you uh, set up the server at, at the zero address, then you can't access from outside, right? And you want to, and, uh, uh, how do you want to to apply then the, the tool set, the, the when, profiling tool set? When you forward the port on zero zero zero, then you can access it from outside the server. If you forward it on one twenty seven zero zero one, then you cannot access from outside. Okay, but but uh, okay, uh, probably we can discuss it offline. How how, uh, how to access from outside then, but but not with the zero 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 address, right? No, for just with the, with the IP of the server on which you're running that that port forward. Okay, okay, probably we can discuss this offline. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's take it offline. I, th I think it's a small it's a small issue and then we can go and check what the memory leakage is. It was always great to get it. Okay, so thanks. Uh, I'll publish the recording as usual. Uh, thanks for joining and I'll talk to you on Slack and see you next time. Cheers, bye-bye. Okay. Bye.